Hey, what's going on? We are live for the Integrated Entrepreneur, and this is a new series that we're going to have coming out. It's called Current Business Events, where Keith and I are breaking down things that happened <laughs> this week and telling you and showing you how it relates to business, and if it's negative or positive, how you can either avoid it or take advantage of it, point blank. And so one of the, right, doesn't get any easier, right, Keith? That's it, man. You either you do or you don't. Exactly. So let's talk about a crazy statistic that just came out of Bloomberg. Okay. <laughs> crazy statistic is 43% of entrepreneurs and business owners were not able to pay their rent in full in April. That is the highest amount in three years. It's the highest amount since COVID. And by the way, COVID was an all-time high. So this is very alarming stuff. Keith, why do you think that happened? Man, I think it's, uh, golly, there's no real one way to put this or one thing. Uh, I, I think it's a, a culmination. I think it's, uh, well, shit. Uh, everyone's going to know I'm a Republican after I say all these things. So That's okay. That. Go for it. If you're, if, if, you're, if you're mad, go ahead and get off now. Uh, but I'm not going to bash anyone. I'm just going to talk openly. I'll bash people. You, you got to under, like, dude, it's fucked. The economy's fucked. And so th where it starts is the consumer's trust in the economy and confidence in the economy. All time low. No one believes that the government is doing anything for the good of the U.S. citizen. Okay. That starts in the White House and works its way into the Senate and all the other idiots that make the decisions that are being made. So I think it starts with that. Then it starts with, you got to think like in Florida anyway, to be in a considered the top 1% of income earners, it's like $48,000. Well, if you make $48,000, it's a real low number, right? It's not a big number, top 1%. Yeah. It's a stupid low number. You talk about the Let's just say that it's like right? 50 grand, 100 grand, whatever it is. Okay. With the inflation and cost of goods rising at the rate that they've risen, mm -hmm. people just can't afford to live anymore. Rent yeah. rates are doubled. I know some places that I rented personally here locally that were 800 when I rented a two one bedroom back in the day. They're like twenty four hundred dollars now, right? Yeah. Twenty five, twenty seven hundred for the same place. Yeah. Wages aren't increasing at that pace. And so when you have wages staying stagnant and you have the government not doing what the fuck they're supposed to and rates not dropping like they continue to say they're going to do, yep. people can't keep up. Mm -hmm. The other component to that is no one really plans for this to continue. So liquidity planning and their ability to save is deplenish, depleted and by all of these other statistics. Yeah then you're left with the decision. Do I feed my family dinner or do I pay my mortgage? Yeah. Well, one can get unpaid for a while. The other one, you die after a certain amount of time of not eating. Yeah. Right? So Americans are being put in a position now to make these decisions that are really difficult to make. And it, there's nothing they can do about it other than yeah. go get another job. Yeah. Pick up a second and third job. Hell, some people are already doing that. Uh, I was going to say, some able. people probably on job number four. Yeah, um, yeah I fun. think it is fucked up. And there was a stat that six-figure income earners, I would say like 60 or 70% of them are paycheck to paycheck. So your top 1% of earners, or just under that, right, is living paycheck to paycheck and it is because of inflation. And so when they come out with a stat like this, the first thing I think of is, well, why is this happening? Well, it's happening. The real reason is consumers do not have money for things that are unnecessary. That unnecessary income or those unnecessary spends, that's called discretionary earnings or discretionary right. income. Nobody has discretionary income to spend on things that aren't a necessity and so you're seeing a lot of retailers and you're seeing a lot of businesses that need dispense, uh, disposable income to thrive. That's what, that's what they sell off of, right? Think about it. Like somebody that's selling widgets, it's not needed for anything. Right. People are going to buy when they have money. If they don't have the money, they're probably not going to buy it. And what you're seeing is credit card 
um, debt at all time highs right now. All time okay? highs and and then just not getting paid. What exactly. was it? JP Morgan and Chase just put out something last week saying that their their debt on their debt is at a whole all time high. Yeah, never been. It's like thirty percent of what they're owed is just delinquent. Correct. And so now you're starting to have bigger companies that are at, that are starting to feel this as well. And so there's not a lot of liquidity, as Keith said earlier, money floating around in the market. And then right. you, you combine it with already crazy high inflation, even though we looked it up prior and they said the inflation rates 3.5 percent. Guys, that's bullshit. OK. Right. And, and I have something else here that I'm going to go through that will show you why it's bullshit. And, and by the way. I'm pulling this from CNBC, which is you, you can't really trust this stuff, uh, but you can't trust what the what the government's putting out either. There's nowhere to really go to to trust this data. OK, but there's a lot of things that businesses and consumers use every single day that is way up. So they're saying electricity is up three point eight percent. I don't right. think so. They're saying food is up ten uh, percent. Again, I don't think so. I think it's way higher than that. Uh, you look at motor vehicle insurance, they're saying that's up 20%. I live in Florida, I can tell you it is up way more than that. Home insurance is way up. The cost right. of materials and to repair anything in your, in your house is way up. I mean, they're talking about that's up 18.2%. This is as of February 13th, 24. Guys, we all know prices are up way more than this and this is just what they're reporting, which is putting yeah. businesses and consumers very light on cash, which is a very, very dangerous place to be. All right. Right now, how do you combat this? And why are businesses in this position where they can't afford to pay rent? I can tell you right now, about two years ago, when COVID was unwinding, everybody had an opportunity. Everyone was starting to get their cost of goods. That price started to increase. Okay. And so what that means was when you guys noticed that it was costing more to deliver whatever product or good or service you, you had, you needed to start raising your prices. Yeah. And it, you should have started two years ago, but it's like planting a tree. When's the best time to plant a tree? 30 years ago. When's the next best time? Today. Today. Okay. Yeah. So if, you, if you're somebody who hasn't raised your prices... Okay, you need to get real comfortable real fast with doing that. Otherwise, you're probably not going to have a business to raise prices up. Keith, not the you business think? you want, for sure. Yeah. That's unfortunate. I mean, you got to look at, dude, McDonald's is up. They're charging more, right? Yep. Wendy's, all these little fast food joints, they're charging more. And if you're providing a service and you are neglecting to charge more with the current events of cost of doing business... You're a glutton for punishment, I guess. Um, yeah. I understand there's, you know, and we talk to people all the time that just, I just don't feel in my heart that my client base needs to be charged more for what I do. The question I always repropose to them is, if you're not here, who's going to serve them? Yeah. If someone's going to replace you and charge more and get their business. Mm -hmm. And when, I, when it's put that way, people start to wake up a little bit. But... The reality is, I mean, where we are in, as a society economically, you it's it's kill or be killed at this point. You either make enough money to get through this or it's going to be a rough, it's going to be a rough little time, yep. over, right? Because what they say, the $1.3 yeah. $1. trillion in credit card debt increased over 2023 is the number that I saw recently. That's insane because people can't afford on their income to continue living the same lifestyle. And, yeah. and this goes like, dude, I sold my boat. I sold the Ferrari. I've completely like tightened up the balance sheet and I'm still looking for ways to tighten up the balance sheet because I feel it too. Yeah. Right. And even at the level that I'm at, which is nowhere near where I want to be. Having said that, I'm making adjustments and getting rid of shit that isn't a necessity to keep my family the way that I want to keep them. Right. Yep. And with that being said, it's not fun getting rid of your cool shit. Your toys. But you can always recover and rebuy when the timing is right. 
Mm-hmm. Having said that, some people need to go into self-discovery mode and take some inventory on what they can do to get themselves in a better position. Yeah. Right. Just like we do with our physical fitness and our health and our mental. You got to do the same thing on the financial aspect of this. The government's not here to fucking save you. Yeah. Right. And we've we've heard it all before. Bailouts, bailout, bailout. Every fucking four years, there's a bailout. Right. It's not, not going to be anything different coming up on this election. The shit is not going to get any easier. And you have to be prepared mentally and emotionally to make decisions that you don't want to make to make sure that you're doing right by yourself, your family, and your clients. Exactly. And guys, if you guys are on, you, you, yeah, to follow up on Keith's point, guys, it's real simple. If you haven't started uh, raising prices, it's a real easy conversation with your clients that goes just like this. Hey, I, we want you to know that we appreciate your business. The cost of us operating and delivering these goods or service to you has increased dramatically. And for us to be able to still serve you at the same level, what we need to be able to do is raise the prices to account for the increase in, in cost of goods. That's it. People will understand. That easy. Okay. You have to have that conversation. You might even want to email everybody and just let them know, hey, this is what we're doing. We'd really appreciate if you come support us. All right. Because what happens is if you don't have the cash to get the lifeline of any business is cash flow. And if your cash flow is struggling, you're going to struggle. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Okay. So make sure you're running the business to the best of your abilities. And guys, if you're really nervous about raising your prices after we've discussed it, well, one, you probably deserve not to be in business. Okay. And, and two, the reality is have the conversation. And if you still feel bad about it, think of something that you could offer your clients that does not cost you a lot of money, almost like a loss leader. And add that into every good or service that you provide that adds additional value to your client so you don't feel as bad or you don't get the pushback that you're, gonna, that you're afraid of. And the reality is the vast majority of people are going to understand and are going to support you. I would say 98, 99%. So you're really worried about that 1% of clients that are going to say, no, I'm not working with you because you want to charge fair pricing. That's ridiculous. That one out of every hundred clients is holding your business back right now. Do not Mm -hmm. let them do that. Raise the prices, find something of value that you can help your clients with it doesn't cost you a lot of money and make sure you do that. And then if you guys are tight, people don't understand this. There's more that there's expensive ways to do things. There's average ways to do things. And then there's cheaper free ways. Okay. If you are running low or you're having cash flow issues, I would never tell you not to spend money on marketing. Okay. Marketing is one of those things that you should not cut when you're struggling. However, you can produce a ton of content that costs you zero dollars and put that where your ideal clients are. And you can do more of it until it works and then double, triple, quadruple down on that to raise, you know, demand and ultimately get more funds back into business. Keith, what else do you have on that? I think just people need to settle in because it's going to be a long haul and save where you can, you know, and, and, and companies that have good ebbs and flow months, you know, the, the number one kiss of death is on a month where you have a crush month and you're making X amount of profit and you spend yep. it. Yeah. Well, that ass whipping's right around the corner that you're not seeing, but it's coming. And so we're, we're just making sure that in the event that people are having, you know, if they have a decent run for a month or two or three, stack as much of that cash as you can, because it's going to be what gets you through the two or three months of, you know, low times. And, and, you know, at that point in time, you're not going to be stressed out. But what typically happens is we spend it. And then if you're in sales, what happens? You get commission mouth because you're trying to sling shit left and right. Right. Or you're having to lay people off because you can't afford to pay payroll. Yeah. You're having to uh, neglect certain things in your kids' lives or whatever else the case is. And I'll tell you, like one of the one of the drivers for me is like 
fuck telling my kids no. Like the biggest painful, most painful thing that I have to do is tell my kids no. Yeah. Right. No, I can't go do that. No, we can't go do that. No. I say that to a certain degree, right? They're not just running the streets with a fucking platinum card, but when they want to go do something, I want to be able to provide. I bust my ass to be able to do that. I'm not home a lot because I'm working so that we Mm -hmm. can do that when I am home. And so for me, that's like where I just tie it back to. Like if I ever have to tell the kids, no, like we got a fucking problem. So let me not make a problem, figure out all the things ahead of time. So if you're having, I guess I say that to say this, if you're having an issue figuring out how, draw that bitch to something that makes you want to cry when you think about it. Yeah. And make it be your, your passion. And so, you know, again, the government's not here to save us. There are no bailouts. <clears throat> Taxes are due every day, uh, especially in April. They were definitely due. Uh, yeah. That one hurt. That did uh, hurt. So you, you just, you know. As, as U.S. citizens and business owners alike, we need to just plan better because yeah. we have seen uh, what foolishness happens in the White House for the past 20 years. And it doesn't seem to be getting any better. It seems to slowly be downgrading every mm. single election. I, I would now, say progressively getting worse. Well, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Uh, so... In order for us to continue to, to maintain the, the lives that we want, we, we got to make sure that we're planning and taking yeah. ownership of that shit. And working way harder to earn, unfortunately, the same. Less. Yeah. Uh, so what are some other things? What are some other things that you help entrepreneurs in terms of savings or having liquidity in their business? What are some things that they may be able to go to right now? Because, guys, if and before Keith answers that, I'll tell you this. One of the things that you guys should be doing, especially if cash flow is tight right now, is ripping through where all your money is being spent, writing it down, almost like you would do a time study. A time study, every 15 minutes, you're supposed to write down what you just worked on, what you did. Okay? This is a spending study. You should be studying your last three months or six months of spending in the business, writing down where every dollar went. And then, guys, start fucking making cuts. Okay? Okay? Cut out what is not necessary and make sure you're not spending unnecessary money that you could be using to grow or maintain your business. So I would say one of the things that you guys should do is do a spend study. And the only person that can do that is you. And you got to be real fucking honest about where you're spending the company's money and how you can reallocate that to a more positive use. Keith, what do you got? That's the same thing. It's it's budget, right? But but two silos. You have fixed expenses and you have your variable expenses. And so we just coach to to delineate the two. Fixed being shit you just can't not pay, right? Unless someone's going to come knock on the door to repossess it. Mm-hmm. Variable is the shit that you want and need and like and love, but don't have to have to maintain, right? And the variable expenses is where we start the budget cuts, right? Uh, and this this is short lived things most of the time. It's it's a like, hey, let's cut out the fucking Starlink internet and go to a, a a basic internet for the next six weeks, eight weeks, twelve weeks, whatever it is, right? Let's not go premium gasoline. Let's go unleaded normal shit, right? For the next two or three months, cut where we can, and then rebound, right? It's all shit we can go back and get again, like yeah. They sold you cable TV once, they'll sell it to you again, I promise. The shit is not going away, right? Nope. But maybe it's the thing that saves your business by you fucking reading a book instead of watching TV for four and a half hours. Yep. Right? So that's the one thing is, to your point, you got to get real honest with yourself, right? And and we know that uh, money is typically the leader of divorces, the leader of arguments in the household, so yeah. be careful what you ask for. Uh it's not a fun conversation when, when we do it at home. We always no. argue. It just happens. But <clears throat> that's step one. Step two is reevaluate your your business profile. How many employees do you have? Are they utilizing all of their hours? Do you have too many people on staff? Whatever the case is. Like you have to go and get uncomfortable, make decisions as a CEO, as a business owner. To save your ass first and foremost, because if you're out of the picture, so is everyone else that you're responsible for, mm-hmm. not just your family. 
right? Exactly. So those are the two places that we look first is like spending in the business, spending on the personal side, first and yeah. foremost. Then it's investments and liquidity and, and all the other things. So HELOC on your home, if you don't have one, go snag one because paying 12 to 15% to save your ass in the event you need the money is better than not having it available. Open up lines of credit, right? Get with some financing like people like yourself, right, Jonathan, to get access to cash. Yep. You may not need it today, but when you need it, it's there, and it just might be what can get you over that hump. Yep. That's what we're guys, telling everyone right now. Get liquid. Yeah. And, guys, there's a difference between having cash and having access to cash. Having cash means it's in your account, it's in your bank, it's ready to deploy. Okay? Now, if you took out a loan, you're paying interest on that. Yeah, don't and, do that. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so I want you guys to understand what Keith is saying is have access. So access to cash means – Having a line of credit open and ready to draw, and I could help you get one set up in 24 to 48 hours. The other big thing is look for expensive debt, okay? Here's why. I'm going to tell, give you guys a little inside uh, tip. Right now, the SBA is throwing $150,000 at business owners, okay? Just throwing it at them. It's over 10 years at 11 and a half to 1175 uh, That's based on Prime. And obviously, that's a little more expensive than we're used to. However, that is much cheaper than you paying fifty, sixty, a hundred thousand dollars in credit cards. Okay, and so if you have a lot of debt that is garbage, garbage debt is any debt that is not producing a return. So anything that you put on your credit cards, that's garbage debt. If there are ways that you can consolidate everything and have one payment at a lower interest rate, that is also a very, very wise move to make in these times do not do not hesitate to do that all right Th those are the types of moves that will save you cash flow and cash overall so be on the lookout for moves like that that you can make all right i'll give you one from a personal example all right i we outgrew our office here the office we're recording in this today we outgrew instead of buying a commercial property i decided to buy a, uh, a single family home that's three times the size of this office. And it's only going to cost me 1100 bucks or 1200 bucks more than my rent. Why did I make the move? Well, I made the move because now I can grow into a new office. I'm not paying somebody else rent. I'm paying myself rent. And it kind of closed the circle on the, on the rent. So by me doing that, now I'm paying myself and I have an asset. When times are tough, these are the types of moves that you want to make and consolidate because when this thing starts getting back on track, whether it's six months or 60 months, okay, now I have another asset and it didn't really cost me a lot more money. And that's going to help build my net worth. So look for moves like this that you can make. Okay. If you guys have questions or you want to go over them, reach out to Keith, reach out to myself. We're here to help. All right, and we will catch you guys on the next episode of The Integrated Entrepreneur. Thanks for tuning in. Share this with someone that needs to hear.